Waiatea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. Kia ora and welcome to Waiatea Fifth Estate, brought to you by the Aotearoa Credit Union. This is a multi-platform current affairs programme streaming live on ytnews.com, thedailyblog.co.nz and broadcasting live on Face TV Sky Channel 83. Viewers, you can ask our guests questions or take our poll. Just go to ytnews.com and thedailyblog.co.nz. Minister for Justice Amy Adams and the government have come out swinging in a take-it-or-leave-it stand on the 2.5 million compensation to Taina Pura. In 1993, 16-year-old Taina Pora was arrested and subsequently charged with the rape and murder of Susan Bedeck. He spent more than 21 years in jail before being released on parole in 2014. He continued to maintain his innocence <coughs> and the convictions were finally quashed by the Privy Council last year. This week, Minister Adams announced compensation payment of $2.5 million. The offer does not include an inflation component, despite a recommendation to do so from retired High Court Judge Rodney Hanson, QC. Taina Porter has been instructed to accept or decline immediately. Here to discuss this in studio, Mana Movement Leader Hone Harawera. Tēnā koe, Uli. Tēnā koe, kia ora, Hone, good to have you. Former policeman, uh, now private investigator and a member of Taina Porter's uh, defence team, Tim McKinnell. Kia ora, Tim. Kia ora. On phone, Green Party MP and Justice Spokesperson David Clendon. Uh, kia ora, David. And, and Murray Gibson, defence lawyer for David Doherty. Uh, and Doherty was acquitted after serving three years in prison for abduction and rape in 1993. And we'll come to that case later. But I do want to go to David Clendon first. So, David, uh, Minister Adams and the Prime Minister have repeatedly said Porter doesn't need to accept the offer. And if he challenges even a small part of the offer... He has to first decline in full. Is, is this fair? It's not fair. It's nowhere near fair. It's typical of this government, unfortunately. They will always offer the absolute minimum, even when the government has issued a, an apology. They know they got it wrong. They got it badly wrong. Um, Taylor has lost 20 years of his life, and they're saying basically take it or leave it. Um, that's simply not good enough. The judge, uh, Justice Hanson, was really unequivocal. He didn't just say that um, that we couldn't prove Taina was guilty. He's come out and said absolutely that he is innocent and he should be compensated and that sh compensation should include that allowance for inflation. Um, the, the minister saying she's hogtied by these guidelines, that's nonsense. The guidelines are exactly that. Um, they were written in 2001. Uh, just, just to give a comparison what that means, with the fact that they're using that um, 2001 figure. Back in 2001, the median price of a house in Auckland was $248,000. Today, it's $828,000. So if Taylor wants to put a roof over the head of his family, which is something he's likely to want to do, um, back in 2001, it would have taken 10% of his settlement. Now it'll take about 33% of that money he's been offered. It's just a good indicator of how unjust that, um, that compensation really is. Tim, I want to come to you. But first of all, congratulations on your great mahi. Thank you. Uh, no doubt about it in the, in the past few years. Does the legal team feel the government is, is bullying Taina into accepting uh, the money? I, I don't know if I'd just use the word bullying just yet. Um, it's, the, it's been a slow, methodical process for the last, um, last year or so since mm. Taina was, uh, had his convictions quashed. Uh, something's happened in the last uh, week or two and the, the pressure's really turned up. There's been time, time pressure. It seems like it's a manufactured pressure. We don't really know why that is. But all of a sudden, Taina was very quickly faced with a, with a take it or leave it um, situation. Um, as everybody knows, Taina has um, fetal, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder uh, and it takes him longer than the average person to process things. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and we just feel that... Um, that you know the take it or leave it approach, uh, having uh, removed the inflation aspect, is, is is deeply unfair and unjust, and it, it appears that Justice Hanson agrees. So Murray Gibson, is it usual in compensation uh, cases for the government to come back and say take it or leave it? I would have thought so, Willie. 
um, <clears throat> the amount that we were offered for David Doherty was 860000 or just over that, which was a, a reasonable compensation for three years' imprisonment. Um, as David pointed out today, that, that equates to $250,000 a year, whereas uh, Tina's only getting $100,000 a year. Yeah, the yeah. cabinet guidelines actually say that 100000 is a base figure uh, and only cases with truly exceptional circumstances would attract greater compensation. Well, I would have thought Tina's case uh, fitted that category of truly exceptional circumstances and I would have thought a figure of more like $5 million was, was uh, adequate or reasonable compensation for 21 years of imprisonment for an offence that he didn't commit. Honey, um, should the Crown just uh, allow payment immediately and, and then allow them to come back maybe for an adjustment? So give some poochie, give some money over now, but uh, uh, la la allow some space for, for that, uh, that inflation adjustment or, or whatever. You know, surely he, sh he deserves some money immediately? Well, there's that case that um, Murray's just mentioned. David Doherty's. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, David Doherty's. So if you, if you was to pro rata that, that would immediately take Tainer's one up to about, what did they take that up to, about five, six? Yeah. Five, so, yeah. So if they've already done it for David Doherty, it was just a few years ago, mm. I mean, the, the precedent is there to be, for them to be actually offering six to eight million dollars, which is what um, legal experts are recommending. Mm. But, yeah, look, we, you know, we, don't, we shouldn't just focus on just the money. Yeah. There's the fact that um, it's the 21 years of loss. Yeah, how do, you, the 21 how do you compensate that? Well, you what, can't what, have, what value on life, wouldn't it? Yeah, I know. It's kind of like um, that, you know, that, that thing of, loss Chief, of Chief Seattle. Yes. Um, how, can you, you know, how, can you, how, how can you buy the sun? How can you sell the stars? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, those sorts of things are, are, are so hard to measure. But in terms of the harm done, mm. you, can, you can use various formulas to create, to create a model for compensation. But... I heard some of the guy on the radio talking about other things too, ways in. So the base compensation, five, uh, six to eight million. Then this guy was talking about, you know, that if the Crown wants to buy him a house, you know, and, and, and pay his bills for the next 21 years, mm. if the Crown wants to, you know, agree to pay for the education of his children mm. and, um, and, his, and his grandchildren for the next 21 years, if the Crown wants to make sure that his spiritual... And, and physical well-being was catered for for the next 21 years. That doesn't mean to say he gets a Mustang this year and a Harley next year yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, everything else, yeah, if you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah. But, you know, if those things are taken care of, then the Crown is doing the right thing. But, I mean, that's after the compensation is taken care of. Sure. Eh? You've, got, you've got to do that as a matter of recognising the absolute loss. It's not, it's not a partial loss. I mean, just, just think, Willie, what, you know, you know the denial... Of access to your children, to your wife, to, your, to sure. going to Tangihanga. Yeah, you must have such a big sli Massive. slice of life. You know what when he's saying, uh, Tim, is, makes so much sense because, we, you know, you know, I, I was doing talk back on this over the last couple of days and I'm thinking, how do you value this? How do mm. you work this out? Because I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I would have been better with the inflation adjusted and you would have got about four or four and a half. But really, what Huni's just said, there's some there's some substance to that, isn't there? Oh, the you could give compensation plus all that other stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's right. I mean, money will never replace no. what he's mm. lost. Ne right. Never ever. And I mean, it's like Maori. You know, when we get you know uh, treaty compensation, money doesn't do doesn't replace anything in terms of the loss. No, yeah. no, that's right. And I don't think we should argue that it is. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it is a token gesture yeah. for right. him. And and we, you know, it's no secret we asked for eight million. Mm. Okay. And yeah. and so. Um, He's you didn't been even all... get halfway there, right? No, no. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Justice Hanson has done a, a really good job with his report. We're not yeah. critical of that. Um, yeah. And he says in his report that it should be inflation adjusted and to do, not to do that is manifestly unjust. So, so if, if it had been inflation adjusted, you would have got at least half of that, right? It, it, look, it would be around that $4 million yeah, 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 mark, yeah, which, we is, think. which seems, yeah. Which, you know, is... Yeah. is Still, we, we could live with. Yeah, you could live, yeah, no, I, I, no, I agree. Um, you know, David, David, uh, there, there's actually no... Um, legal right to compensation for wrongful conviction and imprisonment, is there? It's up to the government of the day, David, to make ju judgment, but it's based on a quantum designed by the previous Labour government, isn't it? That's exactly right, yeah. There's no legal obligation on the Crown, which is why key 
can get away with saying what he said, well, you better take it or leave it, you know. Yes. Um, that's really unsatisfactory. You would expect, though, that there would be, um, that a government of the day would accept they have a moral obligation. Yes. This young man did have a big chunk of his life taken away, and as others have said, you can't give him back that, you know, his opportunity to get an education, to get to get a, a history, to have a family life. That's been taken away from him. You would think any government worth its salt would accept a, a moral obligation to try and put that right. And the, the comparison of the treaty settlements is, is a very valid one. Yes. We all know that the settlements, there, that's the best deal that Iwi and Hapu can get on a given day. They're by no means full restitution. You can't give restitution, but you can in good faith say to, OK, how can we try and make sure that from now on this guy, this young man, can have a decent life yeah. and yes. look after his family and have some opportunities? That's, that should be the starting out point, not this grasping notion of how little can we get away with giving this guy absolutely without right. um, looking completely hopeless. Yeah. A absolutely right. Uh, Murray, John Key apparently has come out now and said the compensation is in inflation adjusted. Uh, he wasn't saying that this morning. I, I don't know where Key's coming from on this, Murray. Well, <coughs> the government want to pay as little as possible, um, clearly, Willie. Yeah. And, um, <coughs> you know, five, six, seven, eight million is not unreasonable. Mm. But I, and I, I hope that our discussion gets to a point where we can question how come uh, this conviction was entered in the first place. Mm, you know, right. according to Justice Henson, who's obviously conducted a very thorough report, there's very little evidence of substance, um, and a lot of speculation, payment of informants and family members. You know, how, how do these convictions arrive in the first place, and why does it take 21 years to undo them? No, I think we need an independent uh, commission to look at look at a lot of these um, suspect convictions, and they should be rectified much more quickly. See, how did the police get on? The, the other thing people were saying to me on Talkback is, well, how how come the police and the and everybody else get away with this? They, you know, that everybody knew this this young fellow got stitched up, horny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody. I mean, we all we all in South Auckland. Uh, we well, we even yeah, no, knew. Who, absolutely, who did it. this is. Yeah. This is this is old news, and, yeah. and everybody actually knows who done it as well. Yeah. So and knew back then, knew back then. Um, I don't I don't want to be rude, but I'm, I can only I hear where you're coming from, Murray. You're trying to be nice. Tim has a role in trying to be nice on on Tana's behalf. But bro, those fucking cops stitched him up. I mean, they they walked him to the place. They 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 persuaded him to say that he was. Oh, not there, he was there. They showed him the places that he was supposed to say where he was and what he did and, and all the rest of it. He knew nothing at all mm. about that. That mm. was so clear mm. from the evidence. But, I mean... I mean, you're expressing what a lot of our people are saying. And, and, and they said that and at the those time. And those who were around, living yeah. up there, yeah. and they, they know that. That's what, yeah. was, yeah. That was, that's what happened. The yeah. guy got stitched up. The boy got stitched I up. Mean, well, the police knew. The bloody police knew who did it. They knew who did it. But they'd already gone down this track and they just didn't want to pull back. Sonny, do you agree with that, Tim? I know this is hard for you, but... And, and, and Hone will, you know, he's... But, I mean, the, the emotion that Hone expresses is a lot of the emotion yeah, from a lot of our people in the community. Yeah, so, well, we've, we've spent six years trying to suppress our emotions yes, and, and yes. anger. Well, you can't on, lose that in on, court, can on, you? On this, we've, yeah. Had, yeah. we've had to be objective. Yeah, of course, yeah. course, but course. I, I, any objective, intelligent, reasonable person that looks at the evidence yeah. cannot be convinced of Tainer's guilt, yeah. I don't think. No. Yeah. And yet for 22 years he rotted in prison. Yeah. And so how could that possibly have happened? Yeah. And who, uh, who's responsible for that? Um, Justice Hansen's report wasn't to examine those issues. It was to decide whether he's innocent or not. Yeah. He's found he was, and he's awarded some um, some money to him. The wider questions about how this was able to happen uh, remain unanswered until such time as there's a full and proper independent inquiry. It's now we're giving away Tana Porter's uh, book in dark place uh, in dark places. So uh, so here it is. So I hope that you can read, can you focus in on that. You can see that. Good. Yeah. Very good. I'm just standing it up. Uh, so tweet us. Uh, um, um, on uh, hashtag Watia Fifth Estate, uh, uh, tweet us and uh, you might just get a book. So uh, there you go. Um, I want to come back to you, David. Is is Adams Minister Adams worried about setting some sort of precedence and opening up historical cases again, like uh, Thomas and, and Doherty for for inflation uh, adjustments? 
No, I think I don't think that argument stands up. I mean, no? every case is unique to itself. Um, as I say, the the age of the the young fellow who, when he went away, the the circumstances, the fact that there was no doubt that he was. I recall seeing the documentary that went on ITV. I actually got a preview of it, and I mean, it sounds funny. It well, sounds strange, but watching that thing, I actually started laughing at one stage, thinking not because it was funny, but because it was ludicrous. Thinking, mm. how could they possibly believe that this young guy was digging a hole for himself, that it was real? Mm. Um, so the notion of a precedent doesn't stand up to my to my view. Um, in terms of how do we stop this happening, I think um, it's timely for us to start thinking again. And of course, I know that Tim's involved with this. There's a project based out of uh, Canterbury University called the New Zealand Public Interest uh, Project, which is all about establishing a body of academics, um, lawyers and researchers and scientists and the like who could reinvestigate some of these cases. Some countries have a criminal case review commission, which is a government funded body to do exactly that, not just like an appeal court, but a body who can go back to day one and say, okay, let's start again. Let's start right from the beginning and try and work out is this person guilty or not. And I think it's really time to put that to the floor and say, well, in order to uh, avoid the sort of abuse of a young man's life happening again, let's get real about having an independent um, oversight. Because, yeah, we know sometimes the police get it wrong, sometimes the courts get it wrong. And having an independent body like this is so would be a really good step forward to maybe trying to make sure it never happens again. Yes, yes. Um, I, w I want to come back to uh, um, to you, Murray, uh, particularly on the Doherty case. Um, you, you, so, you, so you got he got eight hundred sixty eight thousand seven hundred twenty eight bucks compensation, but you, but it was prejudiced apparently because he had previous convictions, right? He he asked for one point three mil. over 168000 for lost income and he got 700000 for loss of liberty essentially that made up the 868 um, and, and there was a deduction made for for you know previous character oh previous convictions yeah yeah um <laughs> which you, you really question the relevance of that when well, someone's that's been uh, Hey. Being wrongly convicted. Um, <laughs> is, is, is it re relevant, Tim? You know, it's, oh, it's completely irrelevant. It's got yeah. absolutely nothing to do with the, the circumstances in which somebody's wrongfully convicted. Yes. And, and to discount it because of that are, is an absurdity. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> what, what about um, Arthur Allen Thomas, David? He, he, he nine years in prison, pardoned in 79, awarded um, uh, 950k in compensation. He lost the farm. Did he get what he was due? Well, again, you couldn't say he did because he spent a long time in prison. He did lose his livelihood, his family home. Um, that money would have been a lot more then than it would be worth now. But even so, yeah, it's a back to that thing. You can't really compensate somebody for taking such away such a big chunk of their life, destroying their reputation, their family relationships, all of that. It's not only the loss of liberty, it's everything. It's literally your life, you know, mm. every relationship it's you right. have. Um, it's just appalling. And so there can never be... In one sense, it can never be enough, but certainly the test should be, is this fair, is it just, does it enable this person to, um, to have a, a, at least a level of financial security so they can get on with their life, look after their family and, and hopefully have a better time than they've had for the last 10 or 20 years. I mean, you've heard the frustration from Hone Harawera. Should there be, uh, should the Crown, should the police now, um, should there be some penalty here? I mean, it seems like they get out... They get off totally scot free. Um, to an extent, they do. I mean, it is 20 years ago. One would hope that, um, the same with um, the, the Arthur Allen Thomas case, where evidence was planted. Yes. We kind of hope that the police have moved on from that. That that sort of thing wouldn't happen in 2016. That there are that there's more integrity and that there are accountability trials to ensure that sort of thing can't yes. and won't happen again. So it's difficult to appoint blame in a sense. Yeah. But, 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 I mean, the buck does stop with the Crown and with the government of the day who really have to do what, they, what it takes to make it right. And what we've seen in the last day or two, they're not even trying to make it right. They're just trying to get out of there at the least possible cost and wash their hands of the whole thing. 
Are we in a better... Yeah, no, no, I, 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 I agree with you, David, but I want to go back to the police because, you know, some of our communities get worried about things. Well, you've had a lot to do with the police. You have a good relationship with the police. <laughs> Are we, you know, you've, you've, you've had a bad relationship <laughs> with the police, but you in the last... But you're a leader, honey. You've been a leader for a for, for number of years. And you form relationship with uh, form relationships with the police. Should should our communities feel more safer now? The ta the Porter types out there. What's your observation in the Kai Tires? I'm in the South Auckland. Do you do do you feel more comfortable with police today? And should our young people feel more comfortable? I, I have to say I do. But then um, I w I operate in two police worlds. Yeah. Uh, one is the Iwi liaison officers. Yes. And I, I talk to them on a daily basis. Yeah. And the other is the, the mainstream police. And I try never to have anything to do with them. And the reason why, and again, is not about me being personal, is that the most recent statistics about um, a Taina Porter and a John Smith walking down different sides of the street. Yeah, not good. They, it's it's still, not good. still the Taina Porter that gets stopped mm. uh, more, more often. All the stats say Or, or gets yeah. uh, questioned more often or gets picked up more often, or gets taken to the station more often, gets questioned and there, gets charged more often. You know, those, those statistics suggest that they, they may have dropped. I don't know if they have, but the, the, the perception out there in Māori communities that this is still going on is still borne out, borne out by the statistics. You're an ex-copper, Tim. You've watched the, the police uh, through the years. There have been changes that there is no doubt. Should, should people in communities... Māori particularly, uh, whether it's in South Auckland, West Auckland, up north, kai taia, kai kohe, should they feel more comfortable tonight? Well, things, Have you seen a change? There's an adjustment, certainly, and uh, Mike, Mike Bush, the commissioner, came out and, and basically acknowledged a few months ago that, um, that there is an issue around bias within yeah. the police. He called it unconscious bias. Yeah. I think another word for that is institutional yeah. racism. And, uh, you know, the statistics make it very clear that that is a problem, mm. uh, not just within uh, New Zealand police. There's an issue yeah. there, but with, within our courts and the way people are treated in the courts. And so um, I, I think it's a very real issue. And uh, before it can be dealt with, it needs to be acknowledged properly. Yes, yes. You got very close to Tainer, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, You're we're very close. close to him, yeah, right? yeah. And, and, and this book in uh, Dark Places, The Confession of Tainer Pura, and, and, your, and your fight for, for justice written by Michael Benef uh, from Te Arawa. What was it? What was it that struck you and got you interested in the case? Uh, well, I heard all about it in 2000 when I was still in the police and yep. I heard people talking about Taina being innocent. And Yeah. Um, I did, did some study. I did criminology and psychology crime and in 2009 I was in a position to, to do something about it and I went and saw Taina and I met him and I was struck by the way he presented. Um, and you know, within a few months, I'd seen the video interviews, and uh, once we saw those you, interviews, you there's, there's no turning back. You knew. Uh, it was Did you get clear. offside with your mates in the police force? A uh, bit, bit of a mixed bag. Um, yeah. We've had some some great support, most of it private, yeah. um, <laughs> as, you, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, sure. um, but some really impressive stuff. But um, I've, I've, you know, stuff has been fed back to me. I'm not popular everywhere. Well, it's not about popularity. No, that's right. your mate over oh, there. I can live with that. <laughs> Morning knows that better than anyone. It's, prin it's principle, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, it's a principle, and if you know you're right, well, you're not out to win popularity contests. Yeah, no? it wasn't a popularity no? contest. And, uh, you know, m most intelligent people that are able to think for themselves can see it for what it is, but sure. um, there are those that can't. And Murray, you got you and journalist Donna Chisholm, you got close to David Doherty during his case in the 1990s. What struck you about uh, Doherty? DNA case in the country yeah. in, in 1990 um, out at West Auckland where a lovely old woman lost her life um, and we exposed some shortcomings the ESR on, on their DNA analysis and Ari Gerson who's, who was a scientist and, and the third member of the team he, he read a report from the Court of Appeal on David Doherty's case and, and he rang me up and he said, Murray, there's something wrong here. And so I went and saw David and I'll never forget David, you know, he, he said to me, he said, Murray, he said, I didn't do this. And he was due to be transferred out of that prison the next day. So, you know, my timing was immaculate. If I'd been a day late, you know, and he'd been sent down the line, then we, ne we may never have had that conversation. Mm. So it's just the, the genuineness of the innocent is what struck me, Willie. And, sure. and I'm sure that's Tim's 
referring to that that same sense with Tana. Just in terms of the money, sadly David spent all the money, subsequently uh, served community service for breaking entry and breaking an entry and theft. Comp compensation maybe might be a curse sometimes, financial compensation. Oh, yeah, of course, Willie, I suppose it's like lotto winners as well. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That people that haven't had money really don't truly appreciate how quickly it can slip through your fingers. And David was very generous with his family members. Yeah. You know, and other people that came knocking at his door, and of course, that eight hundred thousand looked more like eight million sure. to someone like David. And so, yes, he did lose it very quickly. And and I, I sort of, I, I'm sure that Tim, Tim, and, and other supporters will ensure that that Tina keeps a close eye on his money and puts some trust, and and that it's. Um, that, that he deals with it responsibly. I'm sure he will, but, but just it's, it's the other people that come and call him when the money's available that, that you need to be concerned about. Absolutely. He's going to need some help with that money, isn't he, uh, Huni? Give me a ring, Tina, if you're watching. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. You just you stick with the, stick with the guys who, who helped you to where you are now, Tina. Um, there's going to be all kinds of... Um, Dodgy people knocking on your door. People like Willie Jackson, <laughs> like John Tamiri. John Tamiri. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. worry about those guys. They've got more money than you can dream of, brother. <laughs> Just stick with the people who have <laughs> gotten you to this point, and with a bit of luck, they'll help you take this to another level. That's right. With the support that's coming in from everybody else, and hopefully, you know, the, the thing about it, it, it shouldn't just be cut off. No. With the money, let's. It's you know what's what's it going to cost to you? To provide for those sort of costs. Look after his way to it, his partner. Yeah, I, I like it, Winnie. I like it. And yeah. just for, with you, uh, uh, David uh, um, uh, Clendon, David, sorry, David, um, uh, he will need a bit of support there, won't he, David? Oh, of course he will, that's right. And, you know, that's the true of anybody who hasn't had any experience. I mean, he's had virtually no experience for 20 years. He wouldn't have had a dollar in his hand. There's no mm -hmm. idea of. Um, financial management or budgeting, any of those things, and he will be vulnerable to, I mean, yeah, we've heard some jokes about it, but there are some people out there who will just see an ATM machine called Tainer. Yeah, They'll be yeah. keen to empty it out as fast as they can. And, yeah, I think on those advice, you'd have to endorse that to say, yes, yeah, stick with the people who have been on your side when you were in deep trouble, yeah. and now that you're turning a corner and potentially... Um, got some resource to have a life here, yeah, trust the people who have helped you out Absolutely. in the bad spot. And Tim, just you finally, you're one of those people. You, you know, he's never had, um, he's never had money or assets. So you, you you'll be all looking after him, uh, won't you? Yeah, yeah. We've we've put some things in place, and ta yep. you know, Tainer acknowledges that um, managing money is not a strong point of his, and he's uh, he's instructed. That Wants that flash car though, eh? Oh, that's that, <laughs> that's not for debate. <laughs> <laughs> and he good on him. Yeah, and know, go for a bit of a holiday. He knows which one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm not sure if he's quite ready for a manual yet, but we'll have, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have that discussion. Well, you know, mihi yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, you brother. know, congratulations for your for your yeah, wonderful awesome mahi in, awesome in, uh, in the you. past few years, and uh, we, give, we I think we all send our aroha to uh, to this young man. Thank our you. book winners were aroha from Otahuhu, Sid from Glenfield, and George from Teata Two. Great book. It's the latest book from uh, uh, about Tina Porter in, in dark places. I want to thank all our contributors tonight. Fantastic. Kōrero no reira ngā mihi kia koutou, a tēnā koutou katoa. Wātea Fifth Estate is brought to you by ACU, the Aotearoa Credit Union. 